Have you ever heard of crazy stories when you were a child about tribal ceremonies, sacrifices of young virgins, or other scary warrior tales? On our last night on Easter Island, we created our own. Stay with us until the end to see what I mean. My name is Soren. I throw darts at the world map and travel wherever they land, no matter how far or difficult it is. Besides traveling with me, I invite you to do whatever you love before it's too late and live a life with no regrets. My passion is travel by dart. I always wanted to go somewhere where there's just indigenous people and it's a total different culture than what we're used to. Come here, it's like a different world. People are happy. If you if you look at them on the street, they're not rich. These guys have no money, but you know what they have? Happiness. And at the end of the day, you wonder, do I need to make $100,000 a year? Hell no, I need to live on Easter Island. And they're happier than we probably are. It's true, man. I mean, the more things you consume, the more they consume you. And this is, for me, has been a great lesson so far of simplicity rules. You simplify your life and you see the fruits of that coming out through your pores. Like, your blood is pure, your day is pure, your, their, the lens in which you see the world is not tainted by advertisements and ulterior motives and trying to push you in the right direction or the wrong direction. You're just you, living with the convictions of your heart. And Easter Island is the perfect place for that because they have no social classes here. They're not trying sure. to impress anyone. And everyone on the street, I mean, half of the guys are even shirtless. And it doesn't matter. What? Uh, our money, Versace, they don't care. You're totally right. Man. And they're all respectful to each other. It doesn't matter if you don't have shoes. <laughs> your social class is your age. And the respect you get is how long you've been on this planet. And it's, it's a, a right that is not um, earned its deserved. And the word sorry, he said, a friend of ours we met, uh, Miguel, he said the word sorry doesn't exist in the Rapa Nui language. He's like, you people, you white people, jokingly, say, will say sorry if you bump into someone. He's like, we don't even know what that means. Like, you automatically know if you bumped into someone of a greater position than you, they know you're sorry, you know you're sorry, you don't have to say it. It's just, respect is deserved. With that respect in mind, we thought we would embrace the Rapa Nui culture as if it was our own. So we did ask our hosts, Anana and Mama Carolina, to help us do a tribal ceremony and the body paint experience, and man, did they provide. It's our last night here, so for this last night we wanted to do something very special. We wanted to get a body painting and we invited a special friend. His name is Rapa Nui, just like the island, who is going to do some uh, body painting on the mat and I. So I'm, I'm first, I have to work with him on the actual material on the paint and then uh, I have to put it all over me and then he'll do the painting. I'm just waiting for Matt to come in too, but I think I'm gonna start, so I'm ready for it. All right, there's no going back now. ¿Cuál es esto material? Esto es tierra. Well, right now I have to wait about five minutes to get all this mud get dry on me. Right now it's a bit brown, but he's saying that it's gonna get white, which will be obviously much better for him to apply the paint. Esta tierra usaba los guerreros. Guerreros, fighters. Guerreros is fighters. This one is called Maki Maki. Maki Maki was the first king of the island and right now is doing a boat and the boat and the fishing hook and the king were the most representative things of Rapa Nui and that's why he's doing it. So far he's tattooed weapon on me. He calls it an arma. They used it in ancient warrior battle. His name is Skakao. Skakao! So he's saying that this paint is not coming off for five days. 
And then he said, I'm kidding, actually, you can wash it right away. I hope he's drawing a six back on me. That might help. Plant energy. I'm excited for the face now. Face is camouflage. Solo es camouflaje. No tiene significado como esto. Es solamente camouflaje para, para la guerra. The face is only camouflage, so it doesn't uh, signify anything. There's no symbol. It's just because I'm a warrior, or he's gonna paint it so it looks like camouflage. Hundreds and hundreds of years ago, when the Civil War happened, these might have been some of the tools that they used to actually kill people. And because no tribal ceremony is complete without a female sacrifice, we had to find someone. Who is this girl? We could not disclose that. But let's just say she was not hurt in the process. I know, we kind of look like goofs, but we wanted to immerse ourselves in the culture and get to hear from Rapa Nui about the history and the significance of what his ancestors were all about. As for the girl, I was just kidding about the sacrifice part. She is Rapa Nui's wife and she was awesome by agreeing to be part of this culture display. All right, so we're here. This is the last night of Rapa Nui. And we just had the celebration, the ceremony of the Rapa Nui official tattoos of the ancient warriors. Soren, what are you, buddy? Well, I am one of the warriors, but uh, all these things symbolize uh, hooking, uh, fishing hook and the king and the boat, things that are the most important things for this island. How about you? Cool. Um, I was told that I have two battle axes on my chest and that this was like the tree of life that gave energy uh, for the warriors on the front lines yeah. and that my face was the phantom warrior. So the, the ghost basically, you can't be killed because you're already dead. And I said, really? And he said, no, literally you're actually dead. I thought that's a little bit creepy, but that's kind of cool too. <laughs> So the, the coolest thing is that uh, we got the Rapa Nui t tattoos from a guy called Rapa Nui, officially called Rapa Nui. And uh, all we have on us right now, they are the most important things the island actually have, the symbol for it. Sure. And uh, we're going to finish strong with some barbecue fish, ribs, some local, uh, the way they cook it is phenomenal, open face fire, salt, lime, very simple, very meaty fish. I had it the first night we came here and I'm super excited to have it on the last night. So, so uh, it's our last night. All I can say is goodbye Rapa Nui. That's a bittersweet kind of feeling because, you know, they're getting away from, from our regular lives to actually go on a trip like this and now finalizing it and going back home, back to all the people we love, all the things we love, but we also love this. Uh, I don't know how, how to feel about this. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the most remote island in the entire planet that's livable is Easter Island, right? And we got to know it for what it was, not for what the world thought it was. Bye, Easter Island. The trip to Easter Island changed my life. While most people are searching for money, fame, and other things that would validate them in front of their friends, these people don't really care about what others think, are not going paranoia over germs or social distancing, and sure enough, did not have one single COVID case in more than a year. I'm just about to throw another dart at the war map and go wherever it lands. To see what happens and to follow my adventures around the world, you can click the subscribe button or, well, that logo on the screen. Oh, and by the way, to be notified when a new episode comes out, click also the bell icon. 
Last but not least, don't be shy to leave a comment below and let me know what you think.